Welcome back to Galva 102, an introduction to game mechanics. Once again, this is Calibo. Let's jump right in. This guide is going to cover a lot of ground as it goes over all the different features you will use along your journey to 60 progression. We'll start with one of the most important parts of your empire, the army. Hopefully you followed the instructions in Galva 101 and created a food province first. You should be finding that you have a good deal of excess gold and food after spending on progression. Let's spend that on an army. Click down here on Units. Note that you'll have to have purchased the first discovery in order to create your first unit. Just like with your province, there should be a link up here to create your first unit. The first thing you'll need to decide is what type of unit it should be. It works like rock, paper, scissors. Melee beats ranged, ranged beats magic, and magic beats melee. The modifier is really low though, and you can't predict your enemy, so pick whichever you prefer. In general, magic units have high attack and low defense. Melee units are pretty average, but have a good chance of getting good equipment in random events, and ranged units are more luck based, with a large variance of performance. For your first unit, choose balanced. Mounted or unmounted is purely preferential as the modifier is nearly undetectable. Go ahead and finish up with the button down at the bottom. Next, let's equip them. Go down to the armory right below the units. Here you can purchase either weapons or armor for your units. Obviously you'll want to buy equipment of the same type as your unit. In the future you will have more than one different unit but you will still only buy one type of equipment as splitting between two types essentially just gives you two units that are half as strong as they could be. We won't go into the details of purchasing armory yet, um, but you want to spend the same amount on both armor and weapons. So if you follow the first guide and there are at about 40 progression, purchase the first four weapons and the first four armors and your type. Your purchased weapon and armors appear below the available ones. Note that as you purchase weapons, better ones replace them in the available. Okay, now go back to the units tab. Click on your unit and equip the best weapon and armor you just bought. Then go to your provinces tab and go all the way over to the military, the fourth tab. Here you can start purchasing units. Use all your surplus gold and food on units as you work your way up to 60 progression. Note that you can also purchase units from the units directly from the unit tab. It takes one minute to train a single soldier. Most things in Galava are not created instantly, so get used to waiting for your purchases to complete. Let's talk about the second discovery you'll purchase, the university. Once you've purchased it, a link for the university will appear here on the left side with all the other things. Here you can choose between several permanent upgrades to your empire in either food, wood, or, or stone. The bonuses are individually small, but in the long run make a big difference. You'll earn more university points as you purchase more progression, so check back into the university often. You should research all food technologies first. You can never have enough food between land, progression, and military units. Always, always purchase the third available technology. Bigger bonuses are further down the list and you can uncover them fastest by always picking the third option. If you look down here at the, per at the purchase technologies, you'll see that some of them have an arrow beside them. This basically just means that you must have purchased the one above it for it to become available. But it's all really pretty simple, just always buy the third option. Now let's talk about some of the basic economic interaction in the game. We'll start with the simplest feature, the storehouse. At the front page, you can store resources to keep them from being stolen in war. But frankly, the amount you can store becomes impractically small rather quickly. You probably will never use the storehouse. More importantly though, foreign aid also comes in through the storehouse. Foreign aid in Galva is a bit complex. And the amount you can send varies based on the recipient's progression in land. In general, the amount is very small though. However, there are ways to, to increase the maximum aid, so it's possible that you will receive an aid offer here to start you up. 
When you are sent aid, you can improve it at the storehouse. Let's move on to the market. The market essentially fulfills the purposes of the storehouse, only better. Here you can buy or sell any of the types of resources. You can purchase any amount of resources from any of the sellers. The cost per single resource is listed right here. If you're ever in a bind and badly need some resources, spend some extra gold and they'll be yours after a couple hours of transfer time. Also, if you find that you are gathering huge stockpiles of a certain resource, sell them here for gold. Undercutting the prices of other users will most likely mean you will make a sale faster. But as I said, the market can also do a couple other things. Many empires use the market for aid. If I switch the sorting to show the highest prices first, you'll see that some users post resources at incredibly high prices. Guild members can then purchase these expensive resources and effectively move a lot more gold than the aid system allows. You can then use that gold to go back into the market and purchase the resources you need. It's basically a two-step aid system. Don't post resources you don't actually want to sell though, as cancelling only returns 90% of the posted resources. The market can also function as a more effective storehouse, but that is mainly a war function, so we won't discuss that here. Instead, we'll talk about the final economic interaction for this guide, the trading post. You can get two special resources from each province, one for each land type. None of these causes a drastic change. Trades are not absolutely vital for survival in Galva, but they do provide a small edge. Here you can view the various resources you produce, as well as those you're trading for. Note that I have two seaweed. You can stack resources up to three times, earning three times the bonus. On the next tab, you can view your actual trades. You are allowed one trade slot per province. I am currently importing Seaweed and Nightshade. Chuck Anumia and Nave Rudolph are both members of allied guilds. It's recommended that you either trade in guild or with our allies to strengthen ties. Better to help a friend than someone you don't know. If you're looking to find a trade, move on to the third tab. Here you can check whichever resource you're looking for. Hovering over each resource lists its bonuses. I won't detail them all here, but seaweed, oil, and coal are the best economic resources, while nightshade and blood ice are the best military. Some are rare and others are common. For your first trade, look for either nightshade or seaweed, because they're both pretty common. Simply check one or both and click search. You can conveniently see the guild of your options so choose a friendly empire. For simplicity's sake, though, I'll just choose the first one. Now obviously, since I have already used all my trade slots, it says here that I cannot start a new trade. But if you and this member both have an open trade slot, you can click here and then choose which of their resources you would like. That user can then, ch click, can then choose which of your resources he would like in exchange, and the trade is finished. You can only have two pending trades at a time though, so you can't just request a trade with everyone. Alright, with trading out of the way, we'll make just one more brief stop before your second province. At 50 progression, you unlock the, re the workshop. This is a purely military feature. It is a great sink for wood and stone, but you will not be doing anything with this at the moment, so just leave it alone, don't mess with anything in here, and concentrate on getting to 60. Once you've made it, you can finally purchase your second province. Go back to your provinces tab and once again up here there will be a link to create a new province. This should be a wood and stone based province, so pick one wood and one stone land type. Really any combination is fine, so pick whatever you'd like, keeping the bonus resource in mind. Make the stone type, whether canyon, mountain, or outback, your primary land type, and either swamp forest or jungle, your second, your secondary. Congratulations, you now have two provinces. From here, a whole wealth of opportunities opens up. You can war, you can expand your empire, you can increase your progression. The possibilities truly are endless. Check back into the forum to pick your next guide.